All right, so you've got a Holly Sniper, and you probably got a Pro Billet Distributor, or maybe you don't. Maybe you've got that uh, lovely Hyperspark. Who knows? But anyways, can't help you if you got HEI. I never messed with it. Can't say I know how to do anything with it, other than the timing control and uh, rotor phasing, if that applies to them. I'm not sure if rotor phasing applies to the Hyperspark. I never could get an actual answer. If there's a software adjustment to phase those in, or if you have to actually get an adjustable rotor. So, you're running timing control. Maybe you have RFI issues, maybe you don't. Maybe you look under your cap and you see, well this one you can't really see it too well because I've somewhat cleaned it, but maybe you can see that carbon buildup on the corner of that post. Uh, I don't see if there's another one with a lot of it. Yeah, but anyways. So say you're getting carbon buildup on the leading edge of one of these posts. That is a sure sign that your rotor is out of phasing. So what you need to do is one, time to replace your cap because you need to drill a big old hole through your existing one. Yeah, luckily I had a red one and I wanted a black one. So it worked out. This rotor cap or this uh, distributor cap was technically still good, I think, but why not upgrade? So what you'll need to do is drill a hole and make sure you uh, don't make the mistake of drilling any hole. Pick a spot where it's easily viewable. I chose there, which puts me right about like that. So you're gonna need one, order your phaseable adjustable rotor, which you can get from MSD. There's two or three part numbers. Look up which one applies to your distributor. I have part number 8579, and I'll have to put it in the description what rotor I got because I don't remember what the part number was. But anyways, so you're gonna have to drill a hole. You're gonna have to install your adjustable phaseable rotor underneath. Put your drilled hole rotor back on. Don't bother with this top piece, you don't need it. Um, route your plug wires out of the way of that hole so you can see it. You're gonna need a timing light. Make sure you put your timing light on the lead that is where you drilled your hole. And what you're gonna wanna do is set uh, static timing. So it is set at a certain amount. Well, actually, um, well, you could do it two ways. You could actually look at it through the ranges or you can do like I did, I did static and then adjusted my static setting. So I did like 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees and make, made sure it was roughly in the range throughout that. Or you could pick a nice mid-level. So say your ignition timing ranges anywhere from 15 degrees up to 40. You want to make sure your wide open throttle timing is definitely on spot. So you could actually set it to your wide open throttle timing if you want. Uh, I chose kind of a ballpark middle ground and made sure that what you want to see is your rotor contacting dead middle of this. So if it's off, pull the cap, loosen the screws on that adjustable rotor and turn it to where it's pointed there. All right, your wide open throttle one's the most important, but ideally you want it to make, be close to that rotor post throughout your ignition range. There are videos all over YouTube on how to phase these. So go check those out. Those actually go more in depth on how to do it and you can get to see a visual of it. I already did mine, so you don't get to see that. I'm just gonna talk about it. But if you're getting RFI and you've already done the, uh, the normals, a bunch of people don't have issues with random spark plug wires. I run these at MSD 8.5 mil superconductors. I needed new plug wires anyways, so I bought these, which I read were the best to go to for RFI suppression, etc. Two, make sure you have good grounds. Obviously, my distributor gets good ground through this bare aluminum plate to block, and bare there, it's not painted or coated or anything like that. Make sure that's grounded good. Two, I made sure that my hardware is making contact to my Holly itself. It's painted, but I'm making contact on one of these studs housings, so it's getting good ground through the Holly. Two, I don't have an air filter. Some people have filter issues with the filter coming over the top of this. Maybe make sure it's grounded, I don't know. Couldn't tell you. You can always pull the air cleaner to see if that fixes your RFI issues. And of course, my grounding. I run big ass welding cable. You can get this shit off Amazon. It's this, this is small, this is not what I ran. This is, I think, uh, two gauge, maybe? No, no, this is like a four gauge. I think I ran two gauge, because if you're running actual good, high quality welding ground cable, you can run smaller gauge wire. You don't have to run 
double lot or double zero, single lot, whatever wire. You can run two gauge and it's fine. Check out Devin Vanderhoof's videos. He goes over this. There are my bulkheads. It's a positive for my starter and my uh, alternator and the boots off of it because I was checking timing not too long ago and haven't covered it back up. The ground, I go a loop from that to the block. There's another ground that goes from the block to the frame up here. That's all I need. I don't have a million grounds. I don't run to the head, to everything else. I have other things that are grounded that are bolted to directly to the head. My alternator, actually, I never grounded it. I, I have a ground stud on the back. I actually never ground the damn thing. It's a Tough Stuff alternator. It's a 160 amp. I mean, it's technically grounded off this bolt to the head. So I'm pretty sure it makes bare metal contact on it, but maybe it doesn't, I don't even know. But I don't have issues, so I never ran that ground wire. Uh, my coil is mounted over here. I never put a twist on those wires. I heard that helps with RFI. I don't have problems, because my coil runs straight on back and into the bulkhead. Funny thing is, that bulkhead, that uh, Deutsch connector, has a whole lot of Holly sensor stuff that feeds through to my gauges inside. Don't have any issues, weird. But. My, all my wiring passes through this RPM air gap right here, down underneath, it all passes underneath that. Maybe that helps to deal with it. My distributor wires, uh, they're to the head with these clamps. Maybe that helps with something because they're bare metal, they're billet, I don't know. I do have a quarter inch phenolic spacer. That helps with heat. Also helps with uh, the whistling noise that some people get. I don't know. But anyways, this, uh, this wire definitely has a twist, that sensor. Uh, my distributor wire that's under here, that has a twist on it. But yeah, my CD box is mounted underneath the dash over there. It's away from here too. I've never had any RFI issues, I don't know. I didn't have any before I phased the rotor and it was way out of phasing. Honestly, I don't know what causes people to have issues. Maybe I'm the lucky one, maybe I have a different version. Uh, there's the revision number if it helps anyone. Who knows? But yeah, it's uh, that's how you phase a rotor though. And uh, for anybody that's curious, these MSD Pro billets can be used for timing control. You just gotta lock them out, just like you would with any other MSD timing control box. Lock out the rotor. I'm not gonna go through how to do it. There's videos and instructions online. Holly has the damn instructions in the sniper instructions. Read the sniper instructions, people. They go over so much. But yeah, that's it. Phase your rotors. Get your grounds right, run your, run all your cables nicely. Don't use all this crazy vampire clips and duty ass damn uh, butt splices and all kinds of shit like that. Get good good wiring. It's EFI, it's not a carburetor. You're not just sending 12 volts to, some, to a fan anymore. Oh, the other thing I see a bunch of is uh, don't tie your wiring for your EFI into anything that generates a lot of uh, noise, that'd be electric fans, it'd be alternator, it'd be starter, big motor stuff. They, they literally tell you that in the Holly instructions. Trans brakes, etc. Use relays if you need to, to get clean power off the battery and trigger it off of something instead of splicing into something. All right guys, yeah. Face rotors and whatnot, later.